course, turned to my girlfriends, but I forgot for a minute that they're all very beautiful and thin and they've never had guys on the internet or just in life to their face tell them that they were ugly before. And So you thought the internet was the right place to do that? Like you thought TikTok was the right place to... Damn, dude, that, I don't know, man. These people real deal have some mental issues if you think that telling your friends is not the right move, but then telling TikTok is most definitely the right move. You got some problems, okay? There's some, there's some, there's some distances there. There's some cognitive dissonance right there. I things that I would never do, dating as a plus size woman. Number one, settle. I'm not gonna settle for anything less than I deserve, no matter what my body size is, and you shouldn't either. Number two, they know you're fat. If they make a comment about your body in person versus online, they already knew, run away. I've been catfished a few times, man. Like when you when you first meet somebody online and you look into the profile pictures and you're like, ah, this person actually looks pretty cool. It's a nice person to talk to. They look good. They're exactly my type. But then you meet up and you're like, was that picture from like nine years ago, dude? Like, was this like, was this you when you were in like the first year of college? Why do you look so drastically different when you put on an extra hundred pounds since that last picture you uploaded? So I think that when these people say these things like, oh, they know what you look like. That is not always true. You guys got to be a little bit more forward when it comes to what you look like and your body size. I'm sick of looking at profile pictures and it go BBW. Well, I don't know what that means. Thick? I don't know what that means either. Sometimes you look at a girl and they'll go, I'm thick. Dude, you're literally 200 pounds over what you should be. You're 350. It's not, you're not thick. You're dying. So when I hear these people say they know what you look like, not always is the case, okay? You guys gotta be, you guys are incredibly ambiguous on titles. You have like eight or nine different titles that dudes don't have. Like when we're, when we're looking through the genres of body types, you guys have thick, BBW, plus size, little extra. It just like, it goes on and on and on and on. And for dudes, it's like skinny, fit, fat. That's what we got. That's all we got. There's nothing in between. That's all we have, okay? So no, that's not the case. And then also, what you deserve is also quite ambiguous because I don't know what you deserve. I don't even know you. What do you mean, I know what I deserve, therefore I'm not going to settle? First of all, nobody's asking you to settle. Second of all, it's pretty... When you say you're not going to settle, I would love to know what your standards are. Because, like, if I'm going to keep it a buck, you're not exactly what most people would consider to be their type. And I'm going to keep it a, a total buck with you. Now, I'm sure there will be plenty of guys out there that will be perfectly willing to lick your toes with or without sriracha or hot sauce. But... That's not always the best indicator by by which what man or what man doesn't want to be with you. I think these are like incredibly terrible ways of taking that. And then also, like I said, what are your standards? What do you mean I am not going to lower my standards? I know what I deserve. In what way? Please describe them to me. In person versus online, they already knew run away number three you ain't running away that's a factual statement that if you're already <laughs> if you're talking about how he meets you and he goes <gasps> oh my god you call a little bit big and you go run away um yeah i think run away was a poor choice of words person versus online they already knew run away number three if a man comes up to talk to me I'm not going to offer up at my friend in place because I don't feel good enough. What do you even, what does that even mean? I'm going to offer up my friend in place? First of all, where are you in, in general where men are approaching you? I'd love to know that. And I don't even mean that because I think that she's unattractive. I mean, in general, most dudes are not approaching women nowadays because they're scared of women. A lot of dudes find women very, very intimidating. I don't know if you knew this. Because for one, a lot of dudes nowadays, especially if you're talking to like Gen Zers or even in my generation, which I would say I'm like a late millennial. I'm on the very cusp end of being millennial. A lot of my generation and Gen Z especially have absolutely no idea how to socially interact with people out in public. So they have like a pretty good idea of how to socialize in the online realm because everybody grew up with tablets and the computer and, um, you know, internet devices and so on and so forth. But because of that, it's a give and take to it. You're really good on communication when it comes online, but your communication ability in IRL is just like nothing. It's, it's lacking. You have absolutely no experience at all. So when I see a lot of dudes... Um, and I go, go talk to that girl, go, you know, go do it. Ah, I don't know if she's going to like me. Maybe she's a bitch. Maybe she's going to treat me like really ass. And don't get me wrong. A lot of girls are incredibly vindictive. when you talk to them, I approached a girl a few times and I remember one time it was so incredibly disrespectful. This girl was like, I remember I was like, Hey, um, I was just like, I was just wondering if you were free sometime. Cause I'd love to take you somewhere. And she looked at me. She was like, she did this face. She's like, 
okay, um, first of all, no. And I was like, oh, damn, okay, dude, that's fine. I was like, oh, no, there's no problem. And she was like, um, second of all, what are you wearing? And I was like, all right, first of all, dude, that's fucking, that's a little crazy, dude. I, what do you even mean, what am I wearing? Like, you know, I was wearing, like, jeans and a t-shirt. I was like, what are you fucking talking about, man? It's not like I walked up in an astronaut suit or something like that. But this girl was incredibly vindictive. That's not even half the shit she said. Eventually, I just walked away. But I'm sure that there are plenty of men that are also incredibly disrespectful in conversation. I wouldn't know since I'm not of the homosexual variety. I'm sure there are plenty of men that do enjoy the lustation of a man or women that also enjoy the lustation of a man. I'm just not, I just happen not to be one of them. So I only really identify with the opposite sex um, when it comes to that particular issue. So sure, I'm sure that guys do approach this woman. I'm sure they do. But I would just really love to know... <laughs> What percentage of those guys are actually like approaching you for you or do they just want to have sex? That's because like a lot of guys are just head drawn into it in that particular front. And then also offering up your friend. What does that even mean? Like as tribute? Like what do you mean? Like giving her to like the crop fields to yield better harvest for the gods? Like what do you mean offer her up? What are you talking about? I've never even heard. I've never heard that before. And comes up to talk to me. I'm not gonna offer up at my friend in place because I don't feel good enough. Number four, I'm not gonna make myself feel bad because my experiences are different from other people's. Each experiences in dealing with relationships are valid. I, what are you talking about? Can we? I'm sorry, dude. That like completely broke my mind. Can we watch? Place because I don't feel good enough. Number four, I'm not gonna make myself feel bad because my experiences are different from other people's. Why would that make you feel bad though? Because your experiences are different than other people's. In what way? And why would that make you feel bad? What does that have to do with anything? What are you talking about? So you, like, what experiences do you have? Because being a fat person, you maybe have limited experiences, or maybe the experiences that you do have are more contoured to being a fat person, so that makes you feel like maybe you can't relate to the general idea of what a relationship is that most people are probably dealing with. What is it? Why would that even make you mad, though, or, like, upset? Okay. I mean, I, maybe I just don't understand. Each experiences in dealing with relationships are valid. It just depends on what you mean by valid. Like, sometimes... Valid in what way? What do you like, be more specific, please? Because valid is just like such an ambiguous term. Valid in what way? Not all relationships are equal, and not all advice somebody gives you is going to be equal. Somebody can give you very terrible, bad advice because they had experience in a relationship, but you didn't have that experience in a, a, a same relationship because that relationship was incredibly toxic or bad. You understand? So, sure, valid in the sense of like its experience. And you have experience and I have experience, but not all experience is good experience in the same way that not all advice is good advice. You understand? So I know, I mean, I maybe, maybe I'm just like over reading it, but I, it's too much of an ambiguous term. And the last one is whether I'm single or taken doesn't measure the value I have as a person. Sure. But I, again, like, what are these points? What does this have to do with anything? Like, okay, I'm sure. Yeah. It has nothing to do. It just, all right, man, whatever. I'm worthy whether I'm in a Worthy of what? Worthy of what? If you're in a relationship, are you still worthy of love? Sure, from the person that you're with. Are you worthy of love of somebody else? If you want to cheat, why does that have to do with anything? What does being in a relationship versus not being in a relationship mean whether or not you're worthy? Worthy of what? You're not saying anything. These are just meaningless words. Relationship or measure the value I have as a person. I'm worthy whether I'm in a relationship or not. I know I look worthy like of what though? You just talking, man. That yeah, dude, you're just fucking talking. A bobbleheaded bitch right now, but I need my plus size girlies to back me up right I got now. You. Okay. I, got I was you. just talking to my best friend and I was telling him about how, you know, when you're a straight woman, I nah, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, okay? If you're dating a dude and a dude hears I was talking to my best friend and I was telling him. That's going to be a red flag for like 99% of guys. Most dudes understand that most dudes are trying to have sex with you regardless of the relationship status. I remember I was dating this girl and she was telling me, oh, there's this guy and um, he's really cool. He's really funny to talk to. We go to class together. He's like really, really funny. And we're going to like, we're going to have, uh, uh, what did she say? Like, we're going to go lunch, we're going to eat lunch together and we're going to study together. And I was like, oh, Okay, um, just to let you know, that guy probably wants to be your boyfriend or, like, have sex with you or whatever. And she was like, no, I already told him. I already told him about you. I told him how much I love you, how much I care about you, how much of a great person you are. I talk about you all the time. And I was like, well, that's awesome. Like, thanks, by the way. Thank you. But this guy's probably going to, like, no. It's like, and this is a true story. And she was like, no, David, it's never going to happen, right? 
And I swear to God, like three days later, she calls me up and she's like, bro, I can't believe this. This dude literally told me he loved me. And I, I was like, I didn't say I told you so because she knew already. But most of the time, especially if you're talking about younger guys, and I feel like this wouldn't even like limit a lot of older dudes because a lot of older dudes are emotionally immature. Um, they don't care that if you're in a relationship or not, right? Unless this dude is gay, and even some gay dudes are incredibly ambiguous when it comes to their relationship with vagina. The amount of gay dudes I've talked to that have eaten more vagina than me, I don't know why it's so incredibly common. It's like, I don't, it's like these dudes are going to all courses of buffet. Like, I remember I was talking to one gay dude. He was like, bro, I, he, he literally had like a numerical value on how many vaginas he's eaten based on the race of the woman. He was like, I've eaten two black girl vaginas. I've eaten one Asian girl. I'm trying to work on a Middle Eastern one. And I was like, that's crazy. First of all, I don't know where you're even going to find a Middle Eastern woman that's even willing to talk to you, you know, being gay or whatever. I'm sure there are plenty of Middle Eastern women that, especially here in America, that are very, very liberal. But you know what I'm talking about. And then also let them eat your vagina. I don't know. But anyway, the point I'm making is most of the time, dudes don't care. Most of the time. And if you do meet a nice guy that is a best friend and he has full intentions of just being a friend to you, that's great. That's awesome. That's really great, actually. I'm not one of these people that thinks that men and women can't be friends. Obviously, I do think men and women can be friends. It's such an incredibly powerful ability to be friends with another person that's of the, of the opposite sex. But a lot of men are incapable of that. So just acknowledge it. Just acknowledge it like a bobble-headed bitch right now but i need my plus size girlies to back me up right now okay i was just talking to my best friend and i was telling him about how you know when you're a straight woman as a plus size woman on dating apps sometimes guys just don't look at your profile so we're always constantly scared that they most guys are not looking at profiles most <laughs> most people in general are not even looking at profiles okay and the male strategy when it comes to dating apps I know I've watched girls scroll, right? Girls will actually scroll. Okay, he's hot. He's nice. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, okay. Nope, nope, nope. Guys, yes, 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 yes. All the way through. It doesn't matter. Guys don't even look. I remember being over this guy's house. He was playing like Fortnite on his computer and he was just doing this on his, like he had his phone down like this and he was playing Fortnite like this and he was just swiping. Didn't even look. Didn't even look. There was some men. There was men. He was swiping right on men. And don't get me wrong. I've done that too. Not purposefully. I wasn't swiping on men purposefully. But all dudes do that because the ratio of men to women on dating apps is already incredibly skewed. There are more men on dating apps than there are going to be on women. And a lot of women on dating apps are either men or bots. So you have like a really, I would say 70% of the women on the internet in general are probably men. And then the probably a good 20% of those, 20% of the rest are not real, so they're probably bots, and then 10% of those women are probably real women, maybe, it's it's questionable, they, you know, they give or take, and then those women, um, you gotta sort through those ones, right, so you're just saying yes to everything, and if a guy hits you up with a mustache and says you're a beautiful man, you're not, I mean, obviously, don't take a chance on that, like, I mean, I get it, like, maybe you striked out, like, 100 times in, like, 40 days, but that's never an excuse to go over to the opposite sex unless you're really gay, I don't know what the hell's up with these, a lot of these dudes on these dating apps thinking that, just putting their profiles down as women because I've talked to a lot of these gay dudes and they'll go yeah I just feel like I get more reception from guys when I'm putting myself as a woman and I'm just kind of thinking do you like what do you think is going to happen like if I was a dude I mean obviously I am a dude and I'm looking for a woman and I, I like oh man I'm just not getting I'm not getting anything like I'm I keep putting on my rod I'm not getting nothing but this one dude this fine hairy chested broad shouldered chiseled chin man with a mustache says that I'm hot I guess I'm sucking dick. Like, nobody's doing that, right? Nobody's sucking dick because they can't get vagina. That's craziness. At least if you do do that, then you're kind of questionable. That's gay. That's gay. If you're sucking dick for the pleasure of a man, that, that's gay. If you accidentally place your mouth upon a phallus or if you're doing it for, like, a Japanese game show and you're about to win, like, a, I don't know, a Honda Accord for sucking dick accidentally, I'm not going to look down upon you for that. You're doing it for lucrative pur purposes. Anyway. They just don't know that we're fat. And he was like, well, if they're planning a date with you, they definitely looked at their profile. And I'm like, you would be fucking surprised. I agree. I actually agree with this. A lot of dudes are just hitting up girls and going, do you want to date me? Do you want to go on a date? Please. Anytime. Like I'm, I'm free all the time for you, especially you have a vagina, right? Oh, thank God. You have a vagina. Woo. All right. Anyway, um, do you want to go on a date somewhere? Oh, let's do it tomorrow. Matter of fact, let's do it right now. Nobody cares. No, dudes are not looking. It's the truth. It's the truth. I've seen some women 
that have flat out denied dudes. Like if you go to their dating profiles, I don't know why women do this, by the way. Stop doing this if you're a woman and man, obviously, but dudes don't usually do this because dudes don't know how to, I guess a lot of dudes are incredibly, they don't know how to write. Like they're just fucking illiterate. But women will write these long, ginormous, like two or three paragraphs of like their life story. The second paragraph will be like restrictions. Don't hit me up if... You know, like, oh, if you don't drive a car, if you don't drive a car after 2020, if, uh, if you can't handle me, like, which is always a red flag. If it says like, oh yeah, I'm Latina. Uh, if you can't handle a Latina, don't hit me up. First of all, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what the fuck does that even mean. Okay. And then second is like, oh, I have like five kids. I'm 18 years old. Don't hit me up unless you're willing to pay for my kids. And I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's craziness, dude. But um, not all women do that, obviously. There are some cool women out there. But some women will just be flat out dismissing dudes off of the worst things, right? Like, I remember I was talking to a girl, and she was like, oh, um, what, what's your favorite anime? And I was like, oh, wow, this is a really cool question. I've never been asked this question before by a girl. I was like, I like Dragon Ball Z. She was like, ooh. And I was like, what? She was like, I can't date a guy that, that watches anime. And I was like, so why the, so you really just asked me to set me up for a question that's going to ultimately fail, right? I was like, that's crazy. And then she stopped talking to me. She ghosted me because I watched Dragon Ball Z. Who doesn't watch Dragon Ball Z, dude? What are you talking about, man? You're trying to tell me that you don't, you're not trying to watch three grown men screaming at each other for 45 minutes every episode. And then the next episode you hear, last time on Dragon Ball Z, Goku was screaming. And that was it. So that's what I like watching. I'm sorry. I grew up in the early 2000s. Okay. Toonami. Okay. Toonami. That's all I got to say. You would be surprised, okay? Because although I've lost 75 pounds Good and job. the anxiety is so much less than it used to be, I am still so scared that I'm going to show up to a date and he's not going to know that I'm built like Ursula the fucking Sea Witch, okay? That's crazy, bro. You know who Ursula is? Ursula is that, like, that squid, that squid bitch from the original. I don't know if she's in the black girl version of the little mermaid i don't know i haven't watched the black girl version yet i heard a lot of bad things about it i haven't watched a lot of the most recent disney movies because i'm really depressed that they would even bother to remake such masterpieces but whatever um let me know if ursula is in that but the original ursula was like a fat face tentacled I, you know what tentacles nowadays actually kind of got a good rep so i don't think it's even a bad thing i knew a girl that actually had a tentacle dildo so she was repping that but, uh, yeah, anyway, she was a very, very unattractive woman. I wouldn't dream about having sex with her, you know, because, like, usually if you open up, like, a squid, okay, they'll have a beak. And think about that, you know, like, you, you're going to place yourself there? Probably not. I am terrified. I'm shivering me fucking timbers, okay? I am shaking in my boots, okay? Andy's coming. Pass out. Like, I am dying, and I'm trying to get back in the dating world because I told myself I wasn't going to be dramatic and wait until I got skinny and I'm dying. Let me explain. I, I really, I really want to give her a clap for getting into the dating market while she's losing weight. It's incredibly hard process to even think about losing weight, let alone actually execute. And then losing 75 pounds. I don't care when her start date was. 75 pounds is pure progress. Good job on this individual. Her name is... Kathan? Kathan? Kathanian. I don't know. I can't pronounce his name sometimes. But very good job on her. Very, very, uh, 75 pounds is a lot to lose. And we're going to give her a clap for doing a good thing for herself. I'm going to be dramatic and wait until I got skinny and I'm dying. Let me explain. This is the latest. In Girl, you just called fat boys settling for less. You are. So are you less too? I see this phenomenon actually quite a bit when it comes to big ladies dating. They don't want to date fat dudes. And I understand why sex is almost going to be impossible. I've watched fat pornography just for research purposes to, to, to really understand the spectrum, the full spectrum. I've also watched gay porn before, not recreationally. You know, when you're with somebody and they go, I want, you know, like I'm a girl. I like watching gay porn. And I go, that's gay. And they go, but I like the sounds. I like the sounds of gay porn. And then they go, you want to watch it with me? And you go, all right. All right. And then you watch and you're like, this shit is fucking gay. Like this shit is really gay, dude. And obviously it's gay porn, but I've watched all across the spectrum. I've watched hentai, women farting on cakes, dude. I've watched, you know, 
big belly bitches and big belly men having sex with each other. I've watched it all. I'm not going to discriminate. I think that it's pretty good to have a broad spectrum of the pornography that you watch. So that way you can always have something to talk about when these occasions come up, which they always do come up. So I remember when I was watching this very, very fat, fat person porn. I didn't know if it was gay porn. I didn't even know if it was actual porn. It was just two people laying on top of each other and making noises. It was greasy too. But I didn't know if there was like gay porn because I couldn't see penis. I couldn't see vagina. I didn't know what was going on. It, it, both of them had mustaches, I think. Or maybe the, one of them just drank chocolate milk. I'm not really sure. But it, it's very ambiguous. So I understand why a lot of these people don't want to date people of the same sizes of them. Because most of the time, it's like almost inconceivable for them. And then also... You know, they like they like thinner guys too. It's it is what it is. Uh, how many times have you seen a fat woman date a thinner guy? More often than you see a thinner, more often than you see a thin woman dating a fat guy. I think personally. Installment of my series called Good Faith, where I take a question that was not asked in good faith and I answer it in good faith. But in all honesty, I think this is really tricky. I think a lot of the times. Fat people are told that, oh, well, you can just date another fat person True. or some other type of person who's considered like undesirable too. Like you don't have to be alone forever. You can always date someone else who is also undesirable. And it's really hard for us as fat people to talk about that without throwing other fat people under the bus. But what I think is that if you are telling someone, if you are a person who believes being fat is less than and you're telling a fat person to date another fat person who is also less than then yeah you are telling them to settle but i see what you're saying but it's up to you to determine that like if i say if i determine that one fat person is less valuable because they are fat and you don't determine that thing right then why does it matter what i think when it comes to your dating life you understand what i'm talking about that'd be like you going, David, I just really want to buy this particular car because it has storage capacity and this and this. And I go, that car is trash. That car is garbage. It's trash. It's just like literally dog water. I spit on that shit. <laughs> That's just gross. Why does it matter what I think? It shouldn't matter. So if you're considering that to be settling, then that actually means you're considering it to be settling. It shouldn't matter what I consider to be settling. And by the way, if you guys are on equal playing fields, it cannot be settling from that particular averages. You understand? That's not how that works. So even on that point, you're wrong. But I also really think that we as fat people need to divest from this like hierarchy where the people with the six packs are on top or whatever. And like look for genuine love and relationships if we want to be in relationships. Oftentimes I see these people saying that fat people have better relationship skills or they're more inclined to have better personalities because they're fat. And I have to tell you, that's not true. Being fat is not an indicator for somebody to be a very good person um, or have a great personality or be charismatic. Nope, that's not how it works. You can have a great personality and also be thin and you can be in shape and you can have a great, amazing, charismatic personality and that's that's fine. It's not just fat people that have good personalities. I'm sick of people saying this. Um, I know she didn't say that, but I think that's something I should, we should touch on. Because those other ones, not only are the people who are shallow not going to go for you, but also the people who are shallow are... I, you know, if you're going to consider somebody that doesn't like dating fat people to be shallow, that is incredibly, that is incredibly ignorant of you. A lot of people that don't want to date fat people come to the simple knowledge of fat people are unattractive for a variety of reasons. Most of them coming from the fact that you're not healthy. You're going to be dealing with problems to deal with your, your weight a lot. And if you're living like a... Let's just say an active lifestyle, an active lifestyle in the sense of like maybe you like walking, maybe you like um, navigating the world with your legs. That's going to be very difficult to do with somebody that's overweight. And don't get me wrong. I don't think that if you're in a relationship with somebody, you need to have 100% compatibility when it comes to doing things with that person, right? Like for instance, I like playing video games. I like playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I like playing basketball. I like walking. If I dated somebody that like doing their makeup, their hair, their nails, right? As long as we can walk together, that's fine. And I think oftentimes it's awesome when you date somebody that has these things. Unless you're going to yell at me because I didn't hold your hair correctly because I guess I didn't do it correct. I don't know. Sometimes it's really ambiguous. But the point I'm making is um, just because you're fat doesn't necessarily mean that you're a good person. And just because you're thin doesn't mean necessarily you're a bad person or you're smug or you're whatever she said, shallow, because you don't want to date fat people. It just kind of means a lot of times it means I just don't find these people attractive. It has nothing to do with being shallow, matter of fact.
are not good partners. And if you are with them and you gain, the people who are shallow are not good partners. True. And if you are with- But fat people can also be shallow, so. Them and you gain weight, then they might leave you. So the- If you're with somebody and you start off at a certain weight and then you gain weight on top of that, and the person that you're with, it tells you that you've gained weight and you have become unattractive and you are considering them to be shallow because they're not accepting the weight gain, which could be detrimental to your health and the health of the relationship. You're determining that person to be shallow. That's dumb. That's a dumb person thing to say. That doesn't make any sense. You do understand that people are attracted to what, they, what they're attracted to. And hear me out. I get that when you age, parts of your body they, they change, right? I understand that. Not everybody can look like George Clooney until they're 85, right? I understand this, right? But that's not an excuse to be 35 and look like you're 52. That's not an excuse to be 35 and gain 200 extra pounds. That's not an excuse. And by the way, if you're 65 and you're 300 pounds, that's also not an excuse. You can lose weight at 65. I know literally people that are in their 70s that are more active than people that are in their 20s, okay? Great shape. They look amazing. Great health and things and such, so on and so forth. So when I hear people say things like, oh, I'm older now. I can't really do much. Sure, you're more limited. You have, you have less access to things, but you can always lose weight. You can always be better health, and it is extraordinarily beneficial for you to do those things. So don't let somebody tell you you can't do something. If you're older or younger, you got it. Even if you're disabled, I'm sure you can do something. But if you can't, don't look down upon yourself. The best thing to do are with them and you gain weight, then they might leave you. So the best thing to do is either seek out casual sex if that's what you like. Which is not a good thing. Look, if you want to have sex with somebody, I'm not here to tell you you shouldn't do that. But if you're looking for a relationship, dude, what, e what even is the solution? First of all, I know that she's going to give out multiple points here, but first of all, if you're looking for a relationship, the last thing that you should do is give somebody sex because giving somebody sex is absolutely no indication that that person is going to stick around. Actually, it, the results are probably going to be the complete opposite because most of the time, if you give somebody sex casually, they're not going, why would I pay for the cow when I'm already getting the milk for free? How many people just have casual people they have sex with and they never commit to? You think that you're special? You think you're Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake from whatever that movie was where they had casual sex and they fell in love or whatever? Friends with Benefits, I think it was. I don't know. If you think you're one of those people, you're not. It's just not how it works, okay? I met too many people that have fuck buddies and they never get together and the other person doesn't care for them. They just have sex. Nope, not gonna work. Do not do that unless you wanna have sex. If you wanna have sex willy-nilly, that's fine. Go ahead, do what you gotta do as long as you're doing it responsibly. And... You practice safe sex. Don't just have sex with people raw. That's crazy, dude. Strap up. Be, be suited and booted, okay? And then also, um, if you want a relationship, go for a relationship. Casual sex is not a good thing when it comes to that. So the best thing to do is either seek out casual sex if that's what you like or seek out a relationship that's really genuine and strong if that's what you like. So like casual sex is very easy to do because, at, you know, like most people are going to be down for that. Maybe not people on the opposite sex. But if you're a woman, I see no issue. I see most men that are going to be totally down to throw BBC in throat. No problem. But if you're looking for somebody that's going to be a genuine connection for you, somebody that's going to appreciate you and love you and tell you that you're beautiful and won't comment on the fact that your feet are webbed, then that's going to be difficult. That's going to be very hard because a lot of people nowadays, especially hookup culture is a thing. People don't really commit to each other. Most relationships end in the first six months. It's very difficult because there's so much there's so much cause for people to break up nowadays. So I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's very difficult. And this is why I always say, if you're fat, you're literally reducing your chances of finding somebody to be with because most people don't want to be with fat people. So why wouldn't you open up the bracket as much as you could, especially if you want to be in monogamous and find somebody to be with? Dude, make yourself very attractive. And this goes for men and women. You can be you could be muscled up. You could be a muscle mommy or a muscle daddy. You can be better in personality, right? Work on those things. Be more funny. Be more charismatic. Be better in conversations. You can do a ton of things, okay? Lose that extra 10, 15 pounds. Get a haircut. I don't know. There's plenty of things that you can do. And don't let the hierarchy of it all play into it because other... You say that, but like there are... 
when people ignore the beauty standards, I think that the beauty standards have a fundamental truth behind them in the sense of like, generally speaking, the reason why we follow the beauty standards is because most people are attracted to those things, generally speaking. So when I hear guys go, I like fat asses on women, do you think that's a beauty standard that like society has put us under? Sure, to a certain degree, like BBLs, I feel like are crazy. I don't know why so many BBLs are in style right now, but generally speaking, I feel like most men are attracted to big hipped women right? And same thing for like smaller shoulders, right? I don't know, bigger eyes on women. Whereas like women are more attracted to broader shoulders on men, right? Broader shoulder, jaw lines, right? And things such as so forth, smaller hips. So BBCs, if you, if your argument is that the beauty standards is like a facade, I think that to a degree it is like, there's an exaggeration to it, but the general spectrum of it is a true. Like, it's, it's the truth, right? Generally speaking, there are beauty standards that most people abide by, if that makes any sense. And sure, you could be one of those exceptions to the rules. Maybe you don't like people with, maybe you want to date a dude with like, I don't know, 50 inch waist. That's fine. But most people, I feel like, don't want to. Fat people can be amazing partners. People That's true. Fat people can be amazing partners in the same way that thin people can be amazing partners, except you're not dealing with all the problems that a fat person would have. People who are not considered traditionally beautiful can be incredibly beautiful to you if you fall in love with one. That's, you can forgive a lot about somebody's physical appearance, and often I see women doing this. Like, <laughs> I've met a lot of guys that are terribly bad-looking men, but they're really great guys, right? I have an Indian friend who cannot get girlfriends, and they don't like him because he's Indian, which is crazy because he doesn't even eat curry. He's an American Indian, but whatever right? He's an amazing, great, beautiful guy. He has great personality, talks a lot. He can communicate with you. He's really emotionally mature, but he's Indian. So he can't really control that in the same way that a guy maybe looks like Danny DeVito. Maybe you give him a chance, but that's usually not going to happen because most people have this like set in stone standard. It takes a lot for somebody to look past a lot of these things. And you know what gets you in the door looks oftentimes, or maybe even a very good imp first impression, but a lot of people are not going to be given that chance. But if you do manage to find somebody and you are willing to forgive some things for them. And the ultimate the ultimate um, payoff to that is much substantial compared to the looks. That's amazing, right? I know I've been in relationships like that, usually on my end, because I am not on my end in the sense of like I'm dating very ugly women. But like I'm usually the one that's less attractive in the relationship, which makes sense. Because most of the time I think that men are like ugly women, right? We don't have the same standards and things such as so forth. We just like, we're just sloppier versions of women, which is a good thing and a bad thing because I can pee standing up. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, dude? Oh, I don't have to shave today. You guys have to shave your armpits and all your stuff costs more. Ha, <laughs> men winning, right? But you understand what I'm saying. And I think there's a thing that happens to a lot of people. It has happened to me where you are presented with a romantic option in whatever way. Maybe somebody sets you up. Maybe they have a crush on you. Maybe you know, they ask you out or something and you go, oh, you, you're ugly. You look like fried rice. And you maybe, you know, they ask you out or something and you go, oh, you know, I can't consider them because they are, this would be embarrassing for me. I don't know if people are saying that this would be embarrassing for them or they're going, oh, what does this person look like? Oh, they're 200 pounds heavier than me? Nah, nah, that's not good for me. Um, that, Unless they're walking in with like bricks uh, in their pocket or they're coming strapped up with bars of gold to present me on the date. 200 pounds, extra ain't gonna really be doing me right. I don't really be fucking with that. That's kind of heavy. Damn, bro, how tall is she? 5'2"? Bowling ball. That is not what I'm fucking with. I don't know how you can consider that to be something that is r ridiculous. That seems like a pretty normative thing. A lot of people, you can judge a lot based off somebody's physical appearance. I'm going to keep it a solid buck. There's a reason why when you go to job interviews, you put your best foot forward. You look good. You try to look good at least, right? In the same way that if you're fat as fuck, I'm judging a lot. I can see a lot. I can tell that you have a very poor connection with food and nutrition and health. That's already major red flags that I don't want to be fucking with when it comes to a lot of people. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that you can meet somebody that looks very good, very healthy. And then you talk to them. They're like, yeah, I just like did heroin like four, like four times before we even met. And like, um, are you okay with that? Even though I just did ecstasy. And I, by the way, I put some ecstasy in your food too, by the way. 
Like, sure, that could happen, but at least it's more ambiguous than I can just see it and go, oh my God, blag, blag. You understand? Oh, you know, I can't consider them because they are. And then also, what is the likelihood, too, of somebody putting ecstasy in your food and having a heroin addiction? And then compared to meeting a fat person and them being like 100, 200 pounds more. This would be embarrassing for me because they are also fat or something like that. Yeah, I don't think it's embarrassment. I just think it's incompatibility. That happened to me in college and I really had to sort out in my mind, like, do I not want this person because I don't want them? Or do I not want this person because we're both fat? And I feel like- <laughs> I think you're overthinking it. I think it, like you're totally justified in not dating fat people if you don't want to date fat people. But if you're fat yourself, it's going to be a little bit difficult for a lot of people to reconcile that information in their brains. So- Take that however you want to. But most people are thinking about these things passively. Nobody's like thinking deep down inside like, do I do I want to date this person or do I not want to date this person because they're, they're really fat and they're kind of ugly and, you know, they don't brush their teeth very often and they also collect like, you know, nail clippers, like, you know, not na actual nail clippings, but nail clippers. It's kind of weird. Like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. These are your preferences. If you don't want to date that person, it's fine. I deserve better. I think we really owe it to ourselves to unpack our own internalized fat phobia or ableism or racism in dating because we know what it's like to be treated like we're settling for less. But again, if somebody who thinks being fat is less tells you to go date another fat person, that person is telling you to settle. Which Fine, but it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to do that. So it shouldn't really matter what that other person says. Did you date someone who's plus? My left ear, my left ear. Why is this on one side? Please, man. Sorry if you only hear this on one side. Go date another fab person. That person is telling you to settle. Would you date someone who's plus size? I don't know what my answer is if I'm being honest with you. Just say no, dude. What are you talking about, man? I don't... It, when you get somebody on camera, I get it. It's, like, very difficult to answer questions because if you... You don't know if you're going to say something wrong or you're going to say something right. So, you just kind of say, I don't know, actually. It's, like, such a ambiguous question. I, I've never really thought about this. Stop lying. We all know the answer. Dating is overrated in general. Yeah, don't date. 100%. Dating is gay. How is if I can't trust a regular girl, why would I trust a plus size girl? Oh, he's one of those guys, yeah. Bitches be lying. Bitches with social media. All bitches want to do is eat hot Cheetos and be on Instagram and cheat. That's all they want to do, right? No, dude. It's terrible information because, like, yes, there are a lot of people that will take advantage of social media or even, like, have sex with people or cheat on you and things like that. But it's not solely unique to women. And, and then, like, also having this impression that all women are going to cheat and I can't trust women is cringe. So you're saying that plus size girls are less trustworthy than a regular I'm saying person? girls are less trustworthy than the other human being species. True. I mean, I agree. I mean, this is what is true. I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, guys are better. Men can pee standing up. Um, I know there'll be some women out there that go, I can pee standing up too. It, I don't care. I don't care. How often can you do that compared to me? I do it every day. Multiple times a day too. And I can do it no hands. No hands. I just be in there like this. Dancing and shit. Anyway, no, I don't think, obviously, I don't think men are better than women. But um, this particular ideology after Andrew Tate and all this other stuff, dude, it's, it, you know, it is what it is. You got to have to deal with it. Hopefully, you can weed these dudes out. So you're saying that plus size girls should not be. It's not anything to do with plus size. He's literally, why do you keep bringing up plus size? Like, I get it. This is your thing to talk about plus size women. But he literally just said women in general are not, like, worthy of dating. Or what it actually means is I get no girls, so I'm just gonna like take myself out of the the dating bracket in general. Be trusted. Virgin. Size. Plus size girl, regular size girl, it don't matter. You can't trust them. Can't True. date them. Can't True. do nothing. Are you into guys? Yeah, that's exactly the right question, dude. Oh man, that was the fucking that was the bee's knees on questions, dude. Hit him with that shit, that one-two punch. Are you into dudes? 100% of dudes into guys. Look at Calvin fucking Klein, dude. What are you talking about, man? That pause is crazy, dude. You got to wipe your mouth also, dude. You got some, like, spaghetti stains over here. The the pause is insane. Just, the fact that you had to pause on the, do you like men? Come on, dude. That's Trust tough. Them, can't date them. Can't do nothing. Are you into guys? Yeah. Nah, you can't even trust them. You, you can't. Gay is bro. That's crazy, dude. You don't like men. The fa This dude literally just came out of nowhere. This woman asked him, "What do you like men? And your response is, nah, you can't trust them either. So, you don't like... So... It's not that you don't like men because you're, 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 you're not gay. It's that fact. So you are gay. That's actually what you're saying. You don't like men because they're also untrustworthy. Okay. All right. And by the way, if it's both equal, 
then why does it matter at that point? Like, what is it? Okay. Like, if you're... If your point was women are untrustworthy because they're women, and then the counterpoint is also you can't trust men because they're men, then why even bother make the point? Isn't that equal on both sides? Then just say people in general are untrustworthy. Why are you fucking with women? And then, all right, dude, whatever, man. I just... can't trust humans in general. Right? True. So let's clarify what I meant by this. So when I was heavier, I had plenty of men that would hit me up late at night. Is this attractive? Can people let me know down below? I'm not going to identify what I'm talking about, but I know you know what I'm talking about. Is this attractive? Are you attracted to this? Lips. To hang out or... um. They was, They're working on the house downstairs, so if you hear banging, I'm sorry. Me up late at night to hang out or um, they would say just enough nice things to me to make me think that they were genuine and actually liked me. And then we'd hook up and then I'd be like, oh, can we go? Why? Why'd you hook up? Like if a dude is hitting you up and going, oh, you know, you look real good and I real deal want it. I want you to come over so I can just appreciate your beauty or whatever. And you go over there and you have sex. Okay. If you're looking for a relationship, not good, okay? I understand. When you're younger, you maybe not, don't know this, right? This is why I always say, like, maybe go to somebody that's more experienced, that has a little bit more life experience, so you can defer to them. Because oftentimes, when you're younger, it's very ambiguous. You have no idea what the social cues are, how you should act in relationships. So you're just really working from a non-baseline, right? And then also, dating standards have changed, especially in the last, I would say, 10 to 15 years. So even asking somebody like your parents or somebody that's a little bit older may not even have, like, the best type of relationship advice. So even on those particular fronts, it might be a little bit flawed. But um, probably somebody asked somebody around your same age, five or 10 years older, maybe um, somebody that's got more experience than you, somebody that you could trust that's not going to be um, demonizing you or have a good conversation in good faith, right? Because it's, you do not want, if a guy is just hitting you up and telling you that you're pretty and just telling you things that you want to hear and you deem that as like a, oh, then I guess I have sex with this guy. That's not good. To me, to make me think that they were genuine and actually. Like how many times has this happened where a guy hits you up and makes you think that he likes you genuinely and then you go over and suck him off and then he doesn't like you anymore. Like one or two times, sure, but like what, five, six, seven, eight, nine times? Like, come on, dude. Liked me, and then we'd hook up, and then I'd be like, "Oh, can we go on a date, or can we do this?" No, or no. Yeah, why would I buy? Why would I buy a cow if the milk is free? These. Why would you even think these dudes are the type of guys that you would? If you're hooking up with a guy and you literally have never been on a date, and like you've maybe seen each other once, and this is the second time you've seen each other, or maybe this is even the first time you've seen each other, why the fuck would you even want to go out on a date with this guy? What are you talking about? Or maybe if he's a good, genuine guy and just wanted to have sex with you, sure. But, like, more times than not, this guy is not going to take you serious. Can we go out and do this together? And I was always, no, 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 no. Yeah. I don't date heavy women. That's not my, oh, okay. you know. Okay, I forgot this is about heavy women, dude. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, I think most of the time, if a dude, yeah, well, I guess that would play a role in it, dude. I mean, he probably just thought you were easy. Which, ultimately, I guess you were, since you, you're literally admitting that you just had sex with a guy because he said nice things to you. And I get it. Maybe you're coming from a position where you don't have a lot of people say nice things to you. But it's one of those things where you're just going to have to discern these stuff. Like you're going to have to learn from experience or something else. Because uh, nah, it's not a good idea to just have sex with people willy nilly. But yeah, definitely being weighted up is going to 100% impede your ability to receive nice compliments. And guys that are actually serious about you. But this is not the way to do it. Just giving people sex for no reason other than giving them sex and hoping something comes out of it is not the right way to do it. No, like, not my preference. Well, I was your preference behind closed doors. Having sex, having sex is not an indicator of having a relationship. I don't know how many times I got to say this. If a guy has sex with you and you deem that as like a, oh, if he had sex with me, then he probably wants to be in a relationship with me. Nah, guys have set. I've literally stuck my, my, my long John Silver in a conditioner bottle. I've known dudes that have had sex with watermelons. I've known dudes that have had sex with peanut butter. Okay. This is a common thing. Your vagina is like, if peanut butter was like right here, your vagina is like way, 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 way off the chart. You understand? So if he could have sex with, granted, a fat girl, it's much better than having that one night where you stick the peanut butter in the microwave and then you start fucking slamming that shit, adding a little bit of fluff to the peanut butter, if you know what I'm talking about, right? Way better, way better. So do not think because a guy has sex with you or smells your vagina that somehow that's going to translate to a relationship oftentimes it's not going to be the case and don't think that you're high high and mighty because this guy had sex with you that's an indication of relationship is not you know like 
not my preference. Well, I was your preference behind closed doors for this, but you're just embarrassed to see, be seen out in public with me. Yes. And that's what this TikTok is referencing. Like as a bigger girl, I don't know if any other bigger girls have experienced this, but there was plenty of times during my heavy days that I was good enough to do things behind closed doors with, but I was not like this, good. This is why I always say get the commitment. Like don't, if your ultimate goal is to get a relationship, which is what I'm hearing from this woman, that's awesome. I really treasure your decision to be monogamous and find a relationship and be with somebody special and all this other stuff, especially in an era where people shit on relationships so heavily. That's beautiful. Great job. But you cannot give away your primary resource, which is vagina. And now granted, I'm not just saying that you're just vagina. I'm sure you have other things that are making you super, super attractive of a person. But you also have to understand that vagina is hot commodity, okay? Guys want to have sex all the time, primarily driven. And don't get me wrong. I know women also want to have sex. But the thing is, if you're looking for a relationship, you have to approach this with a level head and go, I know that most guys are probably, I mean, every guy that's hitting you up is probably going to want to have sex with you, even gay dudes, right? You have to leverage yourself in a very particular way to get commitment before all else. And then eventually after, I don't know, two, three, four dates, then you can go, okay, this guy stuck around. Obviously he's committed to me. Maybe you give him the vagina or maybe you do something. I don't know. But it's a lot better to wait than it is to just give vagina or have sex with somebody and then think that later on that's gonna something's gonna change. Not good, okay? That's why I'd always recommend go two, three, four dates, and eventually on that fifth date, if the guy's still around, most dudes are gonna leave by that fifth date or that third date, probably. Um, you probably have a better chance of acquiring a mate on those particular fronts than you would have if you just had sex on the first date enough to be seen out in public with or date or girlfriend material and that was simply because they were embarrassed to be seen with a heavy girl and i don't think that that's a preference thing that's just a you want to use a certain type of insecure girl for one thing yeah. and then you want to use a, like have another girl actually be worthy of dating you yeah that's exactly what it is and that's i know it sucks to say but you also do it too you discern things and um i know that guys use women for sex and this is true women use men for man for communication for attention and i see it so often where guys are continuously stuck in friend zones for literally decades of their lives and i get it like you're being fucked and you're not getting anything out of it this man's soul is being fucked because every day you're leading him on into thinking that he's something that he's he's a nice guy and that eventually when you break up with your boyfriend that he's going to be the guy that you slide in there and like he like scoops you up and you're knight in shining armor and then you break up with your boyfriend and eventually you go i'm gonna date this other guy and not you and then his heart's fucking broken for like eight months and it's terrible right all i have to say about this is like if you're a dude stuck in the friend zone most of the time if you're a woman you have to be the one that takes him out of the friend zone and cuts him off because there's a lot of times this guy's not going to be there and i know it sucks to say this because what i'm actually asking you to do is be the emotional support or like be emotionally um like what, what's the word like uh like parenting you know what i'm talking about you have to be the one that ultimately does it when he's like not doing anything most guys are just going to continuously be there they're going to be there for decades if they really i've known guys that are literally staying there i've seen them so it's very tough um so it's on both ends. It's just like, it's very difficult for people in this spectrum, for instance, like if you're a woman, it might be hard for you to see it. And in the same aspect, um, it might be very difficult for men to see it from the woman's perspective. Anyway. <clears throat> Cause I have nothing against men that don't prefer a certain body type on women. So they just don't approach that kind kind of type of woman. They only approach the women that they're like genuinely attracted to and interested in and want to treat right. What I have a problem with is the men that approach certain types of women just to mistreat or use them and then go, Oh, well, I don't I don't date fat girls. And it's like, oh, that's weird because I like you hit me up every night for this, but then you can't take me to dinner. So that's what this TikTok uh, I, it's like, I don't think, I hope that this woman with age, I don't know how old she is, very ambiguous. I'm thinking she's probably almost 40 or something like that. I don't know. Personally, a lot of people that get plastic surgeries in their 20s end up looking like 40 by the time they're 26. And I always think that if you're going to get plastic surgery, maybe wait a little bit longer because you ultimately just end up all looking the same anyway. I don't think it's a good idea. Have your natural feature, features be accentuated. I know we have this beauty standard nowadays of big lips, big butts, big boobs, but you look good the way that you are for the most part, right? Don't think that overcompensating in one direction is going to make you way better in another. Not always the case. 
men will use you women will use you you just it's up to you to discern who is being used right i know there have been times where i thought i was talking to a girl and i thought it was about to get serious like i thought we were about to do something but every time i called every time i thought we were going to do something and i took this girl out on many dates i ultimately decided that it wasn't worth my time and i remember having this conversation with this girl i said um listen I'm going to have to end this because I don't see this turning into anything. And she was like, why, why? You're such a great guy. Like, give me another chance. I mean, it's not about giving you another chance. It just comes down to I want something. And it's obviously – it's clear that you don't want this particular thing um, and leave. That's really what it comes down to. I've met too many dudes that stay into this friend zone or men that have just been consistently fucked um, that never have – like, they'll, they'll, they'll be relationshipless for five, six, seven, eight, nine years. And these women will fully know that these guys want them, but they just won't do anything about it. They'll just sit there because the attention is nice. And I'm not saying that women are inherently bad for that. I'm just saying it's important to acknowledge this shit. In the same way that men will use women for sex, right? And don't think, like I said before, that if a man has sex with you, somehow that's going to translate to a relationship because oftentimes it does not. Of course, referencing because uh, no, one, uh, no person in general deserves to be – hidden or feel like they're not good enough to date but they're good enough to f-u-c-k so that's fine you can think that but that's often not how it works like people people use them people use other people perpetually all the time you just got to hope that the person that you're with is giving you equal usement if that makes any sense so that's what i meant thank you that she has no like i get it like i understand i just hope that she's actually learned from her mistakes and this is just her talking on her past experiences and hopefully she is also more responsible for herself and her her body i hope that she's learned from that shit and not just recycling or doing the same activities over and over again because there are a lot of people that get a lot of enjoyment from telling you their problems and still doing you still doing the problem that's my psa for today it doesn't matter how old you get it never hurts less so a little update <sighs> crying on camera is not a good idea by the way don't do this on tiktok I've been talking to the guy <clears throat> since early May, over two months, and uh, we had a few dates, and I thought it went really well. We have everything in common. He texts me all day, every day. Uh, same shared values, same life goals, same interests, really good banter. And um, he told me that I was smart and funny, and, um, and he told me that I was beautiful, which is the first time it's ever happened in my whole life. Crazy. And um, we went on a few dates, and, and then we were talking, and he just said he's really concerned that of my lack of physical activity. And, um, and I, I guess <laughs> he's, just, he's been trying to convince himself yeah. to find me attractive because I had such a good personality. And oh, that's tough. I, I shouldn't be laughing, bro, but that's tough. I mean, if you're going to post these particular types of videos, I mean, you got to be open to some kind of criticism. That's tough. That's real deal tough, dude. This guy real deal led you on for two months. Hey, two months actually ain't too long. Eh, take it, you know, and work with it. Move on with your life. Um, You really haven't ever been told that you're beautiful? Really? How old are you, dude? I'm looking at some gray hair. Really, dude? That's crazy, man. Your whole life, nobody ever told you that you're beautiful? Well, maybe your mom. Maybe your mom told you you're beautiful. But, like, usually that's not usually how people... Like, you know when somebody goes like, Oh, yeah, you know, people tell me I'm beautiful a lot. My mom... Dude, that's like... I mean, it's great your mom tells you you're beautiful. But she has to. Otherwise, like, what the fuck? That's like a passive ability for moms. But you want somebody else to actually acknowledge the beauty within, right? Um, it's tough. That's tough, dude. But uh, maybe... I don't know, dude. Like, lose some weight. Make yourself more attractive. Like, this guy... I don't know. I mean, let's hear the rest of the story. Um, I told him that I didn't think that he should have to convince himself True. to find me attractive. And that True. Leave him. I mean, that's a factual statement. If this guy is like, maybe he could have worded it in a better way if he was actually trying to be with you. Um, maybe. I mean, ultimately, if he felt this particular type of way, you should have probably left him regardless. But if this guy hits you with, I would just feel like really more attracted to you. If you just kind of got out there more and we could take more walks and maybe you went on, you know, maybe you got in shape a little bit more. I think that, oh, man, you would look so good, by the way, if you just had that amazing cheekbones, um, if your jawline was accentuated and I saw your actual rib cage, that would be, oh, my God, that would be so good. Oh, that would be good. You look so good. Maybe settling that or less of um. I'm trying to convince myself that you look good. That's kind of crazy. That's a little bit ridiculous, dude. God damn, that's hard. I'm happy with 
my body. Which is not good, by the way. If you're happy with your body, that means you're never going to change. And that's not a good thing, especially if you're obese, because you're literally reaping the consequences of having a bigger body, which is this guy literally telling you that you're black. And it's okay if other people aren't. And it's really hard. Like, I think that she made the right decision here, but I think ultimately what she should take from this is just because you think that you have a great personality and all and all this other stuff, that ultimately is not going to be the, the sole reason somebody chooses you, especially if other people that are smaller than you also have that same personality or better. I know it's the right thing, and I do believe that. It just is never easier when you're dating and you're... You plus sized, it never really gets easier. So just lose weight and then you won't have to deal with it anymore because you'll be taken out of the bracket of plus size? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm a relationship guru right now. I'm giving out bangers, dude. And I'm sharing this because I, of course, turned to my girlfriends, but I forgot for a minute that they're all very beautiful and thin and they've never had guys on the internet or just in life to their face tell them that they were ugly before and so you thought the internet was the right place to do that like you thought tiktok was the right place to damn do that i don't know man these people real deal have some mental issues if you think that telling your friends is not the right move but then telling tiktok is most definitely the right move you got some problems okay there's some there's some there's some distances there there's some cognitive dissonance right there and um so i know that there's a lot of other people like me on TikTok. And there's a lot of people like me and there's a lot of people that are going to take advantage of you and say bad things to you and you're already in a very bad emotional stance. I don't know what the fuck you're doing right now. You, it, this ain't the place. This ain't the place, dude. Go to your mom. Go to your dad. Go to your sister. Go to your aunt. Go to your friends, dude. So what if they're thin? What do you think? They can't relate? What are you talking about? Yes, I've seen a lot of you and it's okay if it hurts. Okay. And you're not alone. Cool. And I really hope that one day we can get beyond fat phobia. And uh, you, you learned nothing. You you learned fucking nothing, dude. That you just told me you learned literally nothing. You don't want to solve your own problem. You just want to complain, and that's fine. Complain, just not to me, not to the internet, because people aren't gonna take it. They're not. They're just gonna call you ignorant, dumb, or whatever. They're gonna call you names. Instead, it would be better if you just went to your friends, family, and other people. Maybe I'll meet someone. Sad. When I tell these people are real deal playing the lottery when it comes to their love, dude. That's crazy as fuck. That's crazy, man. Other people, my friends who are not plus sized, the weird connection that plus sized women have with gym rats. They do not believe there me. is a phenomenon I heard that women, fat women, have guys at the gym that are gym guys that want to date them. And I think the idea here is that since these guys can lift a lot of weight. I guess they can handle a lot of woman, which doesn't really make a sense, a lot of sense to me. Um, if you mean physical woman, that's fine. But usually if you're fatter, I don't think that automatically contributes to being a lot of woman in general. They don't think it's an actual thing. I don't know what to say to them. I mean, I definitely can't explain that correlation. There's definitely a correlation. I just don't know what the causation is. Maybe it's biology. Maybe it's a little bit of physics. I don't know. It's like even this though, like what are the percentage of, of gym guys dating fat women? That's got to be like, that doesn't even make sense. That's like a guy that's like, that's like a guy that has lactose intolerant and working for a milk, working for milk factories. Like that doesn't make any sense. Like why are you here? Like at any moment you could die and you're risking a lot. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like you guys are on opposite ends of the spectrum and you guys are still dating. Maybe he's trying to transform you. I don't know. Maybe he's like a project or something like that. Like, I remember I was dating a girl one time and I finally like, she, I finally like let my walls down. Right. And I, you know, everybody's got some problems. Right. And I was like, oh, this is like, this is what I'm going to give you. And like, this is what I'm dealing with this and that. And then like, I shit, you know, her response was like, oh my God, like, oh my God, like, thank you for telling me this. Like I can fix you. And I remember I was like, um, damn, uh, the fuck like i don't know if i want to be fixed like i don't think there's anything inherently wrong with me and like sometimes people will i don't know take advantage of that or they'll go at it in a way I don't, luckily i she was very um forward about it so you know seldom people are going to be forward about it they're going to be very ambiguous about it tell me why yesterday i got this fucking targeted ad it's a plus size dating app but this is how they marketed it 
Me, after finding out there's a dating app where gym bros appreciate curvy girls. I'm telling you guys, it's such a fucking thing and I genuinely don't know why. I think it just goes to show again. This is that girl from, um, what's that one show, dude? ER? You know the Asian girl from ER? Kind of look like her a little bit. That it's not that plus size women are unattractive, but because of fat phobia, there's that huh. added layer of shame and humiliation. It's always everybody else, man. It's never like, yeah, I know I'm fat and I know I got extra folds and this and that and I could do everything I want to do to alleviate my problems and it's literally just me. Like, I'm the only one that's making myself fat, but it's society. Society told you that I'm ugly. When you date somebody who's fat or plus sized. And I just think about how much better a the world would be if we were more honest about who and what I, I think honestly speaking we are being honest and i think that 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 really like hurts them deeply is that most people are honest about who and what they want to date so if you're sitting here going i just wish people were more honest i think you know the truth i think we are honest and i just think you're afraid to admit the truth we're attracted to not allow shame and humiliation to well, that's never gonna happen the basis of how we look for the one TikTok girlies, this is not a drill. I have another Bumble date. Here's the catch, though. Man, I literally only real, have. You gotta be real deal, super undesirable to hit up TikTok and be like, I got another date, dude. When I was going on my, when I was on my dating shit, I had a date a week, every week. I had a different girl that I was going on a date with, and I'm not even, I'm not even trying to say that I'm like super attractive, but it's not hard to find people and go, hey, let's meet up here. You want to do something on this date? And they go, sure, because what the fuck, dude? I don't know. You're having a good time. I don't know, man. So. You got to be real deal, like very, very not getting a lot of dates if you're hitting up TikTok going like, finally another one, dude. Oh man, I finally got a date. That's sad. All right, guys, we're going to end the video here. I know that it ended a little bit abruptly, but that last video was literally just her applying makeup for like five minutes. So I guess I, yeah, I didn't want to like watch it and you didn't want to watch it. So, you know, I hope the relationship goes well though. Um, her lace front is a little bit showing a little bit though. I mean, uh, we'll just say that it's a little showing, but it's all right. It's all right. It's, it's pretty good. I'm just sick of... Dude, I know your forehead ain't that big. Come on now. What is this, like an inch? Like, come on now, dude. Like, let's, let's be honest. Push it back a little bit. It's all right to display the truth, right? I mean, not everybody gonna be looking like Goku. It's okay to say you got a Vegeta or a Krillin. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. I hope everybody appreciate my um, relationship advice. I think I give pretty good or solid relationship advice. So um, if you think so, let me know down below. I appreciate comments. Thank you. Uh, if you want to become a member of my channel, you can by hitting the subscribe button and the join button right after that. If you don't want to, that's completely fine. If you are already a member or subscribed, I want to thank you. Thank you so much, you amazing, beautiful people. Don't feel like you're compelled to join. I, it's, it's completely fine if you just subscribe. Just being here is already enough. Thank you so much for being here and spending some time with me today. You amazing, beautiful person. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in slay because you are slaying today. Beautiful, amazing edges all over your head. And if you don't have hair, don't worry. You still got the edges. They're just there metaphorically. That's beautiful. Ooh, yeah, looking juiced up today. Absolutely stunning. Goodness all over your face and beautiful from head to toe. Whoa, hubba hubba. And I didn't mean that. I mean that in the most heterosexual way because I know if you're a dude and you're watching this, it might seem a little bit gay, but it's not. It's not gay. And if you're a woman too, I'm not trying to seduce you or anything like that. I just think that it's important to outline key features on somebody when they should be outlined, you know? Those shoes you're wearing today match. They're beautiful. The socks you're wearing fit you really well, very well. And you drinking water has satisfied me beyond belief. So thank you, you beautiful, amazing specimen for all the work and amazingness that you've been doing for yourself. Thank you for being here also. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here, sorry, I've already said that. Yeah, with Slay. Uh, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and my Discord server and my second youtube channel you can check all those things out enjoy the rest of your day guys peace